P-R-E-F-A-C-E, the more recent times, which provoked the curiosity in historical sciences by assimilating the past with the present, have also toned down so far as Paracelsus is concerned. But there have been repeated attempts to gain recognition for his work. However, those works were concerned more with his system than with his medications. The reason being that the system as an abstraction of reason may be looked into and criticized by the thoughts of any time period, while the knowledge of the medications, hidden behind the veil of alchemical language, poses very large problems for science and research. Ben Helmont has already proved the error of the Paracelsian system, but held the medications therein in high regard. My studies of magnetism in 1877 led me to Paracelsus, whose thorough medical knowledge of same filled me with admiration. This caused me to further familiarize myself with his work. The darkness of his dot language made it necessary to look for enlightenment by comparing alchemical tracts and treatises. Then I realized that the virtually untouched 11 Fesder Arcane 11 had to be the main goal of culture, and the brilliant healings of Paterius increased my interest even more. The intrigue of the mysterious was a considerable motivator in my investigations. Test after test was conducted, and I was supported tremendously by those two very scientific-minded pharmacists, doctors, Grager and Clower. I was chiefly concerned with the finding of the pain-killing sulfurs of vitriol, sus for vitriosi narcoticum paracessi. When in 1835 I came to the discovery of ferrum carbonicum saturatum, I also found the orum diaphoreticum potterae, which by sublimation of the gold amalgam appeared as a finely separated metallic gold, however, which may be further separated as may be seen through a microscope by a simple precipitation of the gold solution with 11 eisenvitrograder thanias 11 or the vitriol of iron. Contrary to popular opinion, it is very effective, even in small doses, and it proved to be especially effective against rheumatism, particularly rheumatismus cordis. I pursued this line of research and discovered numerous medications which are not listed in the pharmacopoeia, but which nevertheless are efficacious in practice. I had hoped for additional information in Weidenfeld's writings De Secretis et Adaptorum, but the main theme, the Spiritua Vini Lusianus, has remained a mystery except for some illusory glimpses. And only now, after more than 20 years of renewed studies, did I recognize the idea of the acetone in the text. This sheds new light on the medication of the adepts and brightens many of their writings. Due to the prejudice of the authorities against alchemistry, I probably cannot count on a large participation in my cause, but now and then there might be a colleague who is, secretly, interested in this line of research. For this reason, and partly because I want to provide a freeing of the obstructions in this domain and because I desire to leave the 70 years of my research as an endowment, I make this small writing known to the general public. Effelhausen, June 30th, 1862. Dr. A. R. K. R. INTR 0 DUCTI 0 millions. In the old chemical writings, pages 10 minus 14, the characteristics of the Spiritus Vini Philosophici are completely given, and only the substance from which it is made is kept in a mist. Eerious darkness by making references to red or white wine. For a complete disclosure, we turn, therefore, to that part where Weidenfeld, under the title Menstruum Seraconis Ripli, on page 329, says the following Seracon or Antimon? both are fictitious names, according to Dean, red lid, lead oxide, is dissolved in distilled vinegar and is evaporated in a water bath until a consistency of a green gum appears. This acetate salt is distilled from a heavy glass retort, whereby clear water passes over. As soon as a white vapor appears, a large recipient is connected and well looted. Then, when a reddish vapor comes over, the heat is increased and subsequently with a stronger fire, red drops issue forth. At this point, the fire is decreased, and when everything is cooled off, the recipient is taken off and aulically sealed to prevent the escape of the volatile materials distilled over. In the neck of the retort, a white hard sublimate may be found. The residue in the bottom of the retort is black as soot. This soot will be strewn onto a stone plate. And then I publish this little writing, I believe to have made testament with that, considering my advanced age. However, with the grace of God, I have lived for a longer time. And after a serious case of hypogee in April of last year, I have recovered sufficiently to resume my spiritual activities and also continue with my research and studies. Therefore, I consider it practical to give this introduction and at the age of 75. My fondest hope is to be able to see active and enterprising works in this forbidden and forgotten field. This then would be of great help to uncover the long hidden treasure. Mulhausen, February 1867, Dr. Decker. This is the place in the whole book where the behavior of the residue is described this clearly, and after having been lost in dark words for years, all of a sudden I was enlightened. 
the characteristic to burn like a tinder, made it clear beyond doubt that the coal-like residue has to result from the destruction of an acetate salt. Thus the secret of the spirit as Vini Philosophici was discovered, and all the products from the distillation were correct. Now the aqua ardens with the quintessence became a simple chemical fact, and the only thing surprising that was left was how the old chemists had been able to work with it for centuries, without this becoming known. Of course, everybody put a curse on whoever would give away the secret, and this curse seemingly represented a moralistic power, because Weidenfeld, in a book that was to be published later on, indicates hope for the discovery, but the book never came out. And Pott, who had thorough knowledge and who did not have to fear the curse, says that whether because of a promise or because of envy, the preparation is easy, but it is a secret. The tindered yellow residue is dissolved with vinegar, evaporated to rubber, and distilled. The residue is again treated with vinegar and also distilled. The distillates are poured together, combined with the previous one, left 14 days to digest, and then distilled. At first, the spiritus ardens passes over, which is then RECTFied until it is so strong that a linen cloth soaked in it and ignited will burn. During these rectifications, a white oil appears on the surface and a yellow oil also remains, which is being distilled with a stronger fire. The sublimate in the neck of the retort is being pulverized and is placed to melt on an iron plate in a cold place. The liquid is filtered and a little aqua ardens is added, whereby a green oil will separate and settle at the surface. Then it is distilled, first water and then a thick oil appear. The water is distilled in another recipient and evaporated in the water bath until a thick oily substance like melted tar remains on the floor. Aqua ardens. This black liquid substance is treated further with, however, which is not explained any further here. The F, El Dithectuf, just as gold is considered the finest metal, the Hermetics also thought of it as the finest medication. And that is how the Oron Potahale was put on a throne upon which it remained for many centuries. But as much as they revered it, their secret dissolution against was honored as much and maybe more, and they called it gold too. In his old age, Raimund, for his strength, prepared the raw oil from the lead and said that it was more delicious than gold. Basilius Valentinus, who describes the preparation of the Spiritus Vini Physosophici under the cover of the distillation of the vitriol, called the raw oil heavy as gold, as thick as blood, burning and fiery. The real liquid gold of the philosophers. The ideal of the alchemists in the masterpiece of the art was the Lapis Physosophorum, the stone of the wise ones. For its preparation, the most needed metal was the gold. The customary gold was not suited for this purpose because it was dead due to the firm closure of its particles, and it therefore had to be animated first. This was achieved by treatment with the spirit as Vini Fissosifici, whereby the soul, the characteristics were, separated from the impure body and dissolved. This gave then the philosophic gold, or in Nostra WN, the quintessence, the radical dissolution without corrosion, which was achieved through the raw oil of the acetone, called the acetone aerium and the decivius ori. This dissolving power is confirmed by experiment reported by Fuchs, Gestius de Zinc's Pag, 200, hello distilled acetic zinc. At first a lightly acetic phlegm transformed, then stripes appeared, and then followed a sublimate in white fragile flowers. Then white vapors arose which were condensed in the top of the flask into whitish yellow, then dark green oil. The recipient contained a liquid which ignited just like Spiritus Vini. Poured onto water, it first swam at the top, then mixed with the water and only a few drops of a reddish, spicy oil remained at the top. The residue of the distillation was of the color of ashes. On it, the acetic phlegm was poured, digested for eight to ten days, then drained and distilled, leaving a resinous substance at the bottom. The process was repeated until enough resin was obtained. This in turn was then distilled in a small retort and heated to the point of glowing, whereby a yellow liquid transformed, followed by thick white vapors. When the distillate was poured on the white sublimate in the neck of the retort, it dissolved the sublimate immediately and some drops of reddish oil separated on the surface. This oil was then rubbed onto gold and silver trays, which within hours dissolved at the covered areas. Alchemy through shady lab assistants, crooks and dreamers has gained such a bad reputation over the years that in general it is considered to be superstition, cheating or fraud. Only in more recent times have individual voices of the educated world turned to the expression of Marsilius Ficinus, saying that the old and new philosophers, as the natural scientists called themselves then, have spent much effort and work in order to explore nature, and they have subsequently recognized the honorable effort of the old chemists. It was natural science in its old form. As a basic rule, it was established that all bodies are composed of the three chemical elements, salt, sulfur, and mercury. The names which are meant only as symbols and which means something quite different, 
would equate with the following in today's terminology, mercury, hydrogen, sulfur, carbon, salt, oxygen. Missing is nitrogen, whose existence as a simple element, however, is still doubtful. The theory said that the differences of the metals is based on the qualitative proportions of these three elements, and that through changes in these proportions. It is therefore possible to alter the metals up to a perfection of gold and silver. Since the proportions of the mixture were determined only hypothetically, the experiment was only empirically technical. But since all metals and many minerals have been used in the experiments, it presented an opportunity for many chemical discoveries which serve the sciences in general. The old experts and highly respected persons like Albertus Magnus and Roger Bacon, analogously to the efforts of today's science, tended to dismantle the bodies and to create new connections. The old chemistry, using the transmutation of the metals, arrived at no confirmed positive results, whereas modern chemistry not only calculated the atoms, but also their aberrations. The chemistry, which was taught freely in Arabic sciences and which was protected by the caliphs, encountered mistrust and suspicion with its transition to the Christian world. It was derived from the non-believers, whose actions were connected with the world of magic and the devil. It was persecuted by the church. Working with it was, therefore, socially dangerous, and physically the vapors of the minerals and the vast efforts were not advantageous for the health. Large incentives were needed to find followers and disciples, but they were not scarce. Just as the church promises its believers eternal happiness, alchemy promised retention of health by means of the zappies, and with that a longer life and large richness or heaven on earth. In addition, there was the secret with its mysterious appeal. Permeated by the grandeur of their ideal, the alchemists drowned themselves in religious mysticism. Everything started with God and everything was done under his protection. And only through God's grace and enlightenment could the stone of wisdom be obtained. The radical dissolution of the gold, which was caused without corrosives and from which the metal could not be reduced, was the true aurum potahize, the quintessence. Rupesisa says, the quintessence of the gold is aurum dei and part of the zapis, and it is completely transformed into nutriment. The genuine gold is not transformed into nutriment, but it is excreted in the form in which it is taken in. Aurum asimicum, which is composed of corrosives, destroys nature. Therefore, the aurum lapidus is called aurum dei. Paracelsus explains that the quintessence in the gold is very little, but that it has the pact we in the chlor, and when it is extracted, the remaining metal has lost its power. It differs from aurum potahile in as much as it may not be reduced to metal lie gold. A second time, while the aurum potahile may be transformed into a metallic body, therefore its quintessence is finer. Ryman gives the following eloquent but complicated statement. Spiritus vini philosophici is distilled three times over sal territory, and this distillation is kept in digestion for days, at the end of which a yellow residue appears on the bottom. 2. The gold and silver are now separately calcined, that is, amalgamated, and the quicksilver evaporated. 3. On the remaining calcinated metal, each separately we pour three fingers width of the sharp spirit, no more. 1. And then first hold in a water bath, and then the ash bath at boiling temperatures. The dissolution of the gold is yellow, and it is carefully decanted. Also, the dissolution of the silver is green or blue, and it is carefully decanted. 4. The residue of the metals is repeatedly treated in the same manner until everything is dissolved. 5. These solutions are each kept 40 days in digestion, then the solvent is distilled out in a water bath, leaving the metals behind just like oils. The distillate is poured back over the oil, left to digest in the water bath for 24 hours, and then distilled. 6. The distillate is at first gently distilled in a sand bath, whereby the water goes over, then at higher temperatures the spirit goes over, and even at higher temperatures, a part of the oil transforms. 7. The water that went over at first in the water bath is added to the distillate, digested, distilled in the sand bath, and this is repeated as often as needed to have all the gold and silver go over. The solutions are rectified in the sand bath times. Now both are mixed and circulated for days. With this, the great solvent is prepared, which dissolves all metals radically. Now other gold, which has been amalgamated and calcined through the evaporation of the quicksilver, is digested with the solvent no and after its distillation, it is submersed by menstruan magis to dissolve the gold. When this is done, it is drained. On the residue, a fresh menstruan magis is poured for complete dissolution, and that is then combined with the previous one. The solution has the color of a most beautiful ruby or carbuncle. It is circulated for 20 days in a water bath and 20 days in an ash bath. Then you will find the gold transformed at the bottom into beautiful rosin, and the water on top may be carefully drained. The rosin is soluble in any liquid. This is the true aurum potable, 
The procedure is described so clearly that with the exception of the secret solvent agent, it is totally understandable. Noteworthy is that not only gold, but also silver is needed. Rubicis' procedure is simpler. Gold amalgam is finally atomized by evaporating the quicksilver, and then after adding aceton philosophorum, it is placed in the sun. This causes an oil film on the surface, which is taken off as it is forming, and which is placed into a glass with water. The water is evaporated, and the quintessence of the gold, which contains the highest sweetness, remains. A similar case should be the Essentia dulces of the orphanage in Halle. According to the report by Dr. Richter, its inventor, the essential element is a subtle red gold, which dissolves quickly. And without residue or trepidity in the spirit of wine, when the alcohol spirit is taken out, a blackish powder remains, which may easily be transformed into a light, fragile, purple, red, and sweet powder. There is a slight weight loss during this process because the most subtle, even at low temperatures, rises in the form of vapor, which when caught, condenses into red drops. The way to prepare the gold is very different from the usual method, and even though harmless minerals are needed for the preparation, all foreign additives are so separated that all samples can prove that no corrosives are contained therein. Half an ounce of the ordinary essence costs two in Chesteler. Half an ounce of the concentrated essence costs eight in Chesteler, since the latter contains four times as much gold. The substance was considered to be too expensive, and it was said that the gold part hardly amounted to eight of the price. The gold is, however, the least, but the other expenses and the efforts for the preparation, which keeps several people busy year after year, are such that the price in comparison with prices of other medications should be set higher. In Krell's records of 1747, the doctor of the orphanage, Dr. Richter, a grandson of the inventor, states that the process will be revealed in IME. I cannot find any news in regard to this, and an explanation is to be expected from Halle. This information is very little, and therefore a more eloquent report by Wolner Dis. E9, de epilepsia jusque medicamento specifico essencia dulcis adbiwato. Luduni Badavorum 164P22 should be mentioned. According to him, it is prepared from purest gold, which is so refined that even the simple Spiritus Vini Rectificatissimus will dissolve a large amount of it and then turn ruby red. The characteristics attributed by chemists to the radically dissolved Oro Potabio are found also in the essentia dusis. That is, it cannot for the most part be reduced to a metallic body, but it evaporates like smoke even with medium fire. When a large enough amount of water is poured onto this essence, it turns turbid at first, and then a very fine powder sinks to the bottom, which when dried in mild warmth, shows a yellow color and a bitter taste. It is however of such finesse that when added to spirit of wine, it dissolves completely like wax, and it represents again the essentia dulais in color and taste. This indicates that the color of the Essentia du Zeiss originates from this powder or the finest crocus auri. When this powder is heated at a medium temperature in a glass over coals, there will every once in a while be very fine coins of reduced gold, but the largest part of the residue seems so dissolved, refined and freed from all metallic chains, that it may not be reduced to metal because as the powder feels the fire, the larger part flies away in smoke, leaving a fine powder which may not be reduced either with one spiaskizans, an uh, antimony glance istibnite, or with lead, but which forms a highly red purple colored salt when melted with sal tartari. This salt will even perpetrate the teagle and color it purple on its outside. In Kleinfelder and Konigsberg issued a statement against this essence, saying that it was nothing else but a tincture of burned sugar. And he said that the sugar tincture that he invented was as effective as the Essentia dufo, even if it really contained gold. Later, it was believed that the black coaly residue of the preparation when lengthened with ether to become a reddish brown. Tincture, and when mixed with Franz Brand twine, was the Essentia duelsis. It seems that the procedure was done according to Lullius. An indication for that is the preparation from the black residue in the distilling of the ether. The wrong interpretation may have resulted from the fact that Lullius calls the substance for the spiritus vini philosophiae in many places nigh greater than in Nigrius. And after the distillation of the ascetic salts, a black substance like melted pitch remains. Maybe a spy in the laboratory overheard something about this black residue in the retort and thought to have discovered the wine spirit coal in it. The earlier hermetics used their acetone in many ways, partially for chemical procedures in connection with acids and salts, partially for the preparation of medications. From the vegetable substances, the quintessence is extracted within hours when it acetone is used. An interesting observation of Rupasissa is that the Laxantia through this become more effective and are therefore administered in smaller dosages. 
Among the later chemiatrics, Corsitanus used it for the preparation of the antipyretin and a gold tincture. And Agricola too manufactured several medications with it without realizing that he already possessed the menstruum Louis, which he desired so much to obtain. We should mention here, the healing from Podagra, which the Count Onofrio de Marciano tells of in his hermetic writings of P. When he suffered a severe case of Podagra, he placed the spirit on the swollen and extremely painful foot. And, oh wonder, he says, the pain disappeared and I started to dance for joy, to the astonishment of my friend. After that, the Podagra has not pained me again, and I didn't have the least bit of complaint thereafter, but I've been completely free and healthy like before, but from then on. I started to take 20 drops in the morning before eating for 15 days in order to completely clean the blood since there is no blood cleansing like it in the whole world. He calls the substance only spiritus simplex, but in the hermetic experiment on page 161, where he cites from Lullius that the quintessence heals all tiredness and sickness and removes all weakness, protects from all sicknesses and retains the youth, he clearly says. And I swear the truth that I've seen wonderful things done by the simply I spiritu vini philosophiae, and I have even healed the podagra completely with it, as many have seen and have been ashamed by. The newer chemistry has again taken up the research since Chenevix found the acetone as spiritus pyro iatios. This research, however, dealt only with analytic interests, disregarding its medical costs, and medicine was left empty-handed without its due share. The alchemist rectified the pure acetone repeatedly in order to eliminate the water and to arrive at a concentration that would burn like alcohol. The more modern chemists dehydrate the acetone with calcium chloride, which we, however, cannot approve of, since the latter combines itself with the wood alcohol, which is analogous to the acetone. This combination does not dissolve at 100 degree. This condition proves disadvantageous when the product is used as a medication. This process seems also unnecessary since the aqua ardens, the acetone, is more volatile than the spirit of wine, and it merges already at 48 degree in veins. While the water follows only at higher temperatures, and the two oils do so at an even higher temperature. The entire distillate was kept in digestion for several weeks in the warmth of horse dung, whereby especially the oil, the quintessence, is separated on the surface and it provided a very pleasant smell. This oil consists of two oily substances, one, a distillate according to Fittig, about acetone page, at the other one, Dumasin at 1E200. These two oils form the core of the medication, therefore the substance is an acetonium oleosum and correctly should be called an Acetonol. The pure acetone, as provided by the chemical industry, is of little medical value. It is clear and light as water, burns completely, but has no trace of oil on the surface. The oil, however, is still inside because if you place the acetone in mild digestion over an extended period of time, the oil appears in surfaces. I already observed this reaction in the past, and I have repeated the experiment now. I placed ounce pure acetone in a glass that was not tightly closed on the back burner. After approximately one half had evaporated, a trace of oil appeared, and after two months, when only drachen remained, a visible layer of a clear oil was on the surface. The pure acetone may be quite good as a chemical preparation, but therapeutically it constitutes a weakened oil-poor product, which only has the appearance like vanilla beans out of which the aromatic benzoresin has been drained. For medical application purposes, it will be advisable and required that it is prepared with the same method used by the hermetics. It takes a lot of time and patience and under the current situation of the business. These may not be expected because already in during a discussion of the Weidenfeld Spiritus Vini Luiani, Jung can complain that the modern chemists are not able to produce anything extraordinary since they start to work in the morning, but stop again at night, which is the wrong way. Because a good thing takes time. T-H-E-W-I-N-E-S-P-I-P-I-T-O-F-T-H-E-A-D-E-P-T-S. This investigation is based on the work of Johannes Seger Weidenfeld de Secretis Adepto WMN Sive Usu Spiritu S. Vini Luliani Libri IV, 1685, 12. In the dedication of Robert Boyle, Weidenfeld speaks about the progress of his studies. He had diligently studied the work of Paracelsus 10 years ago, but after two years of study, he had gained no clear insights. Especially the unfortunate preconception of the Alka has posed a big problem. Already without hope of being able to learn its preparation, he consequently compared the descriptions of Sir Kazatun Minus, specific of a UN, Kural CBWN, etc., in order to find the method of preparation, while being convinced that all of them were one and the same dissolvent. Numerous and hardly believable experiments proved futile, and he had already planned to give up chemistry and medicine when his eyes were unexpectedly opened, and he realized that they did not only have different names, but that they were different in material, preparation, and use. For instance, 
Instead of the single liquor alkahest, he found several solvents, their preparation and their usage. What remained incomprehensible to others in Paracelsus became clear to him, and he reached the end before the beginning. His joy, however, did not last long because several futile experiments taught him that the solvents of Paracelsus contained something else secretive which could not be taken literally. With that, he dropped the alkahest experiments and turned to studying Lullius, Basilius, etc. There he realized that they all agreed and confirmed the Paracelsus solvents that the preparation of such was simple and to be understood literally, and that only one word remained unknown, which, however, according to the experts, identified the general basis of all such solvents. That is the Spiritus Vini Physosophici, with whose knowledge and possession the greatest secrets in chemistry were solved. In Wilna, he heard of Robert Boyle, who was the only and the first person in chemistry to use an open and clear language. Therefore, he went to see him in England to discuss the solvents and the medications of Paracelsus, as well as to discuss other secrets. Boyle accepted him well, praised his studies, and therefore increased his ambition for higher achievements. It is noteworthy that this spirit was Vini Philosophici, whose composition has been clearly given by Weidenfeld, is not mentioned by the later chemists. Only Pot, Exerc, Chim, Barrow Uni 1738, 4, P21 describes it with the following words, There is an oily menstruum which has not been named yet, and which has not been revealed by any chemist. Wine spirit is a pure, light-colored, volatile liquid like the it is oily and burns with a bright flame. It tastes sour like strong vinegar. During distillation, it transforms like snowflakes. It affects all metals and gold, extracting the latter in a red form and when the menstruum is taken off. The tincture that remains resembles resin, which dissolves dark red in spiritus vinian, which leaves a black residue from which, as I believe, the salary may be made. This menstruum mixes with water and oils, and if you ask me for my opinion, then I would say it is the true menstruum of Wienfeld, the spiritus vini physosophici. The preparation is easy and simple, but a secret and Pott does not reveal it. Wiedenfeld promised an explanation in the fifth book, but this fifth book was never published. Others have prepared the substance and used it as medication, but have not known its identity with the Spiritus Vini Luliani. The newer chemistry concerned itself repeatedly with it and researched its nature, but it hasn't found an opportunity to connect its research to the works of the experts and to make it available for medical application. This lets us automatically take a look at the pharmaceutical chemistry. It was the traditional task of doctors to produce and improve their weapons, especially the chemical medications. With the big triumvirate Stahl, Borhov, and Hoffman, pharmaceutical chemistry reached its peak. The arsenal was well equipped. The pharmacist lent a helping hand to the doctors, and since the doctors could rely on them, slowly more work was left to them. And only in single instances would doctors work with research and preparation of chemical medications. The upswing in botanics by Linné and the pathological anatomy by Morgani in physiology by Haller, and in chemistry by Lavoisier, led the doctors into other fields which promised rich harvests on little worked grounds. The pharmacy followed the immense progress in chemistry quickly, and achieved an importance which was favored and supported by the government and the doctors. The rights of pharmacists were generously outlined, and the secured lifetime position increased the performance and the scientific eagerness of this class. The technical chemistry developed further, however, and led to the installation of chemical factories thus changing the whole situation. The advantageous position of the pharmacists and the easy procurement of the preparations from the factories, where the time and money consuming lab work could largely be saved, caused cheating with the pharmacies. The prices tripled and quadrupled. A pharmacy that was worth 20,000 THLR guaranteed to its owner a good income. The new buyer paid THLR, and now the interest on the additional THLR had to be worked out too. That caused consistent complaints in regard to insufficient taxes, interference with rights, and shortage of protection, as much as the government tried to help by increasing the taxes of medication and work. The complaints continued because with increasing income, the prices of the pharmacies rose, and without the interest for the anti-natural additional capital. The Prussian government tried to limit the growing power of the pharmacist order in by issuing concessions to a person for the newly built pharmacies. In the newly acquired French provinces, all privileges had already been lifted and there were only concessions. With time, the difference between a concession and a privilege disappeared, and the government by highest order of 1842 reacquired the free disposition of the government over the concessions. After that, it was determined. One, the concessionaire is obliged to take over the supplies, etc., according to their tax value, i.e., according to their real worth. Two, a competition was to be held, and the government reserved the right to give the concession to the most qualified pharmacist. 
This was ideal. The concessions here became civil service jobs, and it was in the government's hands to unite the most talented and ambitious pharmacists in a brilliant scientific chain work, just as it was doing with the other state employees. The means for the execution, however, was never used. It consisted in setting the price of the concessions according to the appraised value and to adjust the tax accordingly so that the amount would be sufficient but not exorbitant. The pharmacists already holding concessions argued vividly against this supposed limitation of their rights of property, and already after four years the government gave in, put the ideal aside, and went back to the old narrow ways. Since then things have continued to deteriorate. The pharmacies have sunk into mere industrial installations. As industrial enterprises they also carry the risks of such an installation, and the government has no obligation toward the country to support and to help that stock market game. The need of the time has re-established the power of the government. The feudal rights in Austria, the real rights of businesses in Bavaria were abolished without damages, and in Prussia too. The tax freedom of the United States was eliminated through an appropriate release payment. In one example, I was able to observe the way in which the concessions were handled. A speculating pharmacy helper applied to establish a pharmacy in a village, but was denied permission. He told me openly that it was not his intention to keep the pharmacy, but that after a few years during which he would create a booming business, he would have sold it, expecting a profit of six. 000 TLR, with which he would have been able to start something new. In this situation of the pharmacies where the lab has lost its old honored significance, the doctors are earnestly reminded to concern themselves again with the preparation of chemical medications. Considering the enthusiasm for chemistry, a number of capable and doubtlessly big results could be gained. That will also serve a good purpose, that is, that through the self involve. Meant a large trust in the medications is being achieved. The complaints concerning the unreliability of the medications and the deficiencies of the therapy will disappear because they are due to the fact that most of the young doctors lack the practical knowledge of the medications. They don't know their weapons and therefore don't know how to use them. Surgery has a large assortment of instruments available. No surgeon has been before an anvil, but the steel worker manufactured all instruments, but none of them has invented any. But the surgeon in his mind invented the instrument according to his needs and the steel worker only executes. The surgeon's idea just like the surgeon who cannot be without the instrument maker, the doctors cannot be without the pharmacist. But both are only helpers, not leaders. The wrong approach, where the pharmacist pushed himself into a leader's position, has brought great damage to practical medicine. Many of our best medications originated in the old days, and their application today is based upon the recommendation and previous observation. The intended supposed improvements of the formulas are frequently nothing but falsifications. Another mistake was the change in names of the medications and the adaptation of the respectively reigning chemical theory. Hoofland requested in the name of the practical doctors that the old names be kept, but the governing pharmacy found that to be below its scientific honor, and only with special consideration did they compromise to add it in parenthesis. Mercurius, Dulais, and Calomel are old names for a common medication back then, and the doctors held on to the name by exception, but the Pharmacopoeian listed under more than seven names all of which were scientific or which had been partially changed back to unscientific ones. The old ammonia lost its real name through the chemical Baptists. This way leads to the Tower of Babel, and if the doctors keep changing to old ways, soon they will not be able to communicate anymore with the pharmacists. P-L-I-A-S-R-I-S-T-A. Paracelsus repeatedly expressed a prophecy which his followers accepted truthfully and which merits remembering in the interests of history. The references are... From the preface to Tinatura Physiorum, German version, part I, P. My theory, which is based on the enlightenment of nature, may not be reversed in its consistency, and it will start to bloom in the year. And consequently, the practice with unbelievable signs and miracles will prove that also the workmen and all the common people will understand how the Theophrasty art stands up to the muddling of the sophists, because of their incapability want the protection and support through papal and imperial liberties. And on P924, these arcanes which cause the transformations are little known. And even if they have been enlightened by a god, no immediate glamour of the art will appear. But the Almighty also provides them with the reason to keep them secret until a future time. Elias R. Greater than Tista. When the secret will be lifted. De Mineralibus. Uh, part 2, page. It is true that the earth still holds much of which I know nothing. Others, too, have no knowledge. I am certain that God will still show many strange things which never have been shown and of which we did not know anything. It is also true that nothing is hidden that will not be made known. Therefore, after me, there will be someone whose magnificence is not yet born, and he will make it known. Three of the natural things, chapter eight about vitriol, part YP. 
2506. There, or I say that many secrets lie in nature, in other things of nature, and in God's creations, and would be better and more useful to study such things rather than indulging in drinking, whoring, and other mischief. But nowadays the whoring will be going on until one third of the world has been murdered. The other third dies because of roguery, and hardly one third remains. Then things fall back into their places. But as things are going now, that might not happen. It is also necessary to extinguish the caste system in the world, or it might not happen either. Then we will have the golden world. That means then man will come to his senses, live like a human being, not like an animal, not like a pig, and not in the dives. When will that be? While some have anxiously awaited the Helios artist T, others do not look at it as a person, but as an expression of a period when science will be at its best and will be a common asset to all. That time has started with the new chemistry, and if you look at our time during this period, and if you want to personify the Helios Artista, there will be no doubt at whom in Germany all the, the educated people will be looking. The theological opinion moves the goal even further. Hapelias, who in Val, V.I. Theatra Hemiae gives a report concerning Helios Artista, and refers to the enlightenment of John Chaps, and Nine, and considers the time as cone for the partial destruction of mankind by war, also by release of the angels at the borders of the Euphrates and subsequent spreading of the plague, when fully one-third of mankind has perished and the victory of the Lamb has been achieved. Then is the zero alert are restored. The face of the church will be lifted. Then the world will be under Christ's rule and the Jews converted. T-H-E-P, re-P-A, rat I-N, of the Y-N-E, S-P-I-R-I, T-S, F-T-H-E, ad E-P-T-S, Spiritus Vini Philosophici S, Spiritus Vini Luciani, the original description of this is from Raymond Lowell in his Lieber. The Quinta Essentia and White and Fide starts with that. As, you distill the best red or white wine, Vinum Rubium Vez album in the ordinary way to obtain aqua ardens. This will be rectified three times and kept so that the burning spirit does not evaporate. The unmistakable sign is that sugar, which has been soaked with it, when brought into a flame, burns just like brandy. When the water is prepared in this manner, you have the material out of which the quintessence will be drawn. You put it into a circulating recipient, seal it hermetically, and place it in horse manure where the heat remains as a constant. It is important that the heat does not decrease, otherwise the circulation, digestion of the water is, distributed and not maintained, which is desirable. If, however, a constant heat is used, the euintessence will separate later in the digestio. End process, which is visible by the line that separates the upper portion, i.e. the quintessence from the low, after a sufficiently long digestion, the recipient may be opeted, and if a wonderfully pleasant aroma emerges, one which cannot be compared with any other pleasant smell in the world, and one which simply assails everyone, then you have the uintessence. If this does not occur, the recipient must be put back and left until this goal, as described, is achieved. This aqua ardens, spiritus vini philosophici, closely resembles the ordinary wine spirit, and this is why it has not been recognized. It differs, however, inasmuch as in the process of continued distillation, an oil will separate and swim on the surface, which will not happen for the other material. It is the basis, the beginning, and the end of all dissolvents of the adepts. In its simplicity, it is perhaps the weakest, but when combined with other materials, it is the strongest menstruum. It appears in two forms, one, like ordinary wine spirit and mixable with water, the other, as an oil on the surface. It is always the same thing the difference being only in the purity and fineness. Lull's method is actual of correct, but it comprises only a part of the process which is explained in other recipes, such as I have compiled from Weidenfeld. We would like to use this opportunity to explain the word menstruum, according to the Weidenfeld definition. For a long time, this word held civil rights in chemistry. The adepts have always used the allegory of creation to veil the preparation of the stone of wisdom just like the embryo in the uterus is nurtured and gradually formed to maturity by the retained menstrual blood, the secret dissolve and constitutes, like the menstrual blood. The means to nurture and form the chemical child, the philosophical stone, therefore they called it menstruum, the name which has subsequently been passed on to all solvents. Cosium venosum paracini, page 128. After the distillation of the aqua ardens and the phlegm, a black substance like melted pitch remains. This is washed out with the phlegm, mixed with the alcohol, digested and distilled, which is repeated with fresh alcohol until the residue is quite dry. The distillate is called spiritus animatus. This in turn is poured onto the residue in increasing amounts and digested until it is totally absorbed and the residue is of a white color. 
Following precedes the sublimation. The sublimate is found to be clear and white as a diamond is. It is placed in a water bath where it turns to a liquid. Then, the excess water is distilled off. Now, it is distilled four times with the first alcohol, using always fresh portions of alcohol. The distillate then is digested for 60 days. The success of he work can be determined when, on the bottom, a residue is formed that is similar to that of fresh, healthy urine. The quintessence is then separated and is found to be so clear and light that its presence in the glass might be doubted. Keep it in a cold place, well sealed. This is explained in a slightly different way in Weidenfeld on page 134 as follows. Coelum venosum luyai. Here the aqua ardens is poured directly onto the black residue, digested, the aqua animata developed, and the oil is distilled off at higher temperatures. The residue is calcinated until it turns white. Then it is soaked with the aqua animata four times and sublimated. The shiny sublimate is mixed with the aqua animata and distilled once whereby the salt is transformed too. The distillate is placed in digestion for days and turns into a pleasant smelling quintessence, clear and light like a star. On the bottom you find a salt, like in the urine of a healthy young man. Another explanation is found on page 138. Sal harmoniacum vegetabile parasini. The black residue is washed out with phlegm until it is white and shiny like a diamond. Then it is distilled with aqua ardens in mild heat until the veins disappear. Then the receiver is changed and the phlegm is extracted with higher temperatures. Like before, the residue is again distilled with the spiritus ardens until it turns white and does not smoke on a glowing plate. Then it is repeatedly saturated with the spiritus animatus, digested and all humidity is extracted. When a piece of it is placed on a glowing plate and mostly evaporates in smoke, then sublimation follows. This is the sal harmoniacum physosophorn, sal harmoniacum vegetabile lulia. The remaining thick substance, like poured pitch, is treated with spiritus ardens, thereupon. First the spiritus animatus, then the phlegm, and finally the oil are distilled until they are dry and won't fume on a glowing plate. Then the eighth part of spiritus ardens animatus is distilled as many times until it becomes volatile, which you can see when it completely goes up in fumes when placed on a glowing plate. Now it is twice sublimated, then dissolved in spiritus ardens, distilled, and the distillate is digested in 40 to 50 days into a pleasant smelling liquid. Sal harmoniacum vegetabile lulia terrafoliata. The spirit is distilled from the Bucco Lunaria, Vino Philosophico, with the mild temperatures of a single lamp until veins appear. Thur indicates that it is distilled. Now another recipient is attached, and the second water, which still contains some spirit, is distilled until pure, tasteless water passes over. The black residue is then calcined. This may not be done with fire, as the sophists say, but only through its own spirit. Therefore, the second distillate, aqua ardens mixed with phlegm, is poured on it, dissolving it immediately. Then it is distilled over a lamp until the veins appear. That is when another recipient is attached and the distillation continues. This is repeated until it is like a black powder or until no more phlegm passes over and the last water smell and taste are as strong as those of the first water. The residue is now treated with the fourth part spiritus argator thandens at low heat until it is white as snow. Then it is put on top of the fire where after 30 hours a magnificently white powder as light as silver settles along the walls. This is terra nostra foliata, sal harmoniacum lulii. The black residue is extracted with the phlegm, and this process is repeated many times until it keeps its color. After the evaporation, an oleum. Vegetable remains. The dry residue is distilled three times with spiritus ardens. On the black calcin residue, you pour the oleum vegetable. Let it digest for 10 days in the ash bath. Then you add the spiritus. Amatus, distill it away, and subsequently the sal volatile is sublimated. Colum vegetable circulatum lulii. You digest the spiri tus ardens in a flask with its neck turned downward until it floats lightly and clearly like oil on top. Then you open the seal with a needle, let the impurities flow out, and quickly turn it around. This is the spiritus ardens circulitus with the most pleasant smell. The black residue is extracted with the phlegm. It is calcined and soaked with the spiritus ardens circulitus. If a portion of it almost completely evaporates on a glowing plate, then the sal volatile is sublimated, then dissolved in spiritus aptin circulatus and digested, and thus the quintessence is maintained. Mercurius vegetabilis lulii. The pitch-like residue is extracted with phlegm and distilled, leaving the oleum vegetahyle. Onto the black residue, your pore spiitis ardens and distill it. Then it is calcined in the reverberatory furnace, and the salt is extracted with the phlegm. Onto that. Spiritus ardens is poured and distilled until it passes over unchanged. The thusly condensed salt is digested with the olun vegetae hile and then distilled. 
Aqua vitae rectificata lulii. The first spiritus ardent still contains some water, and a linen soaked in it ignites in a flame, however, does not burn. After repeated rectification, the soaked linen will burn up completely. On the pitch-like residue, you pour spiritus ardens rectificatas, distill, and then the olun vegetahe results. The black residue is distilled with the last spiritus ardens, then it is calcined in redarcherio, and distilled seven times with the latest one alcohol. It is then called aqua vitae rectificata. The complete process is as follows. The Vin Wn Yu Hon Vel album, the secret philosophical wine, is distilled in the usual manner. The spirit thus obtained still contains water, and a linen soaked in it will ignite but not burn. With repeated rectification, it becomes so strong that a linen soaked in it will completely burn. The spiritus passes over in veins, and when those disappear, the collector is changed and the phlegm is distilled out. After the first distillation, it still contains some spirit and it is kept for future use. The spirit is put in the heat of horse manure to digest until an extremely pleasant smelling oil separates on the surface, which constitutes the quintessence. Lull obtained it with light, blue color, others with a yellow color. After the spirit and the phlegm have passed over during distillation, a black substance like melted pitch remains. This is extracted with the phlegm of the first distillation until it does not change color anymore. The discolored portions are combined and distilled off, leaving an oil. The residue extracted this way is calcin. This is done in different ways. In the method on P143, Lull says the calcination may not be caused by strong heat, but only by the spiritus air dense on P170 and 172. However, he says that it is done in the reverberatory furnace. In the methods on pages 138 and 168, it was white through the distillation of the phlegm, but on page 143, it is still a black powder after the same treatment. And on pages 161 and 172, it remains black after being treated with spiritus A. Dia ends. The thusly prepared residue is digested and distilled with spiritus ardens in varying conditions as many times until it is fully saturated and white, and the spirit passes over unchanged. The sign is that a portion placed on the red hot plate will not fume anymore. Then it is distilled repeatedly with spiritus eight ardens until it becomes so volatile that when placed on a red hot plate, it evaporates completely or to a large extent. When it is prepared thus far, it is sublimated. The sublimate is clear and light like a diamond. It may be used for the preparation of the spiritus vini filled auto sofici by repeated distillation with the spiritus ardens, whereby the sal volatile passes over. The distillate is kept in digestion for 60 days during which time it turns into the pleasant smelling quintessence, which is so clear and light that it can hardly be seen. The sign is a residue that deposits at the bottom like the urine of a healthy young man. Now follows the preparation of the Sal Tartar, volatile, von Belmont, established the reputation of the high medical power of the volatile alkaline salt. In his description, he says, page 377 of the German edition. If impurities are found in the first processes, you must add dissolvents. If they persist, however, then you need the volatile alkaline salts, which cleanse everything like a soap. It is certainly astonishing how much a tartar salt, when volatilized, can do because it cleanses all veins of impurities. On page 1142, when the fire-resistant salts are volatilized, their power becomes similar to that of the great medications. They proceed up to the entry of the fourth digestion process and dissolve all blockage. On page 351, the first one is the alkahest. If that cannot be obtained, then you must learn at last how to volatilize the tartar salt so that you can prepare your solutions with their help. On page, the tartar salt, Weinstein salts, can be completely volatile. It rises at times liquid and often like a sublimate. This salt has been proven in tests, even though this measure is less known. De Lebo Silvius, in his time the pride of the University of Leiden and the founder of a new chemical medical school also, knew the sal tartari volatile. The school, however, with its doctrinary exploitation of the consequences of the system, destroyed this reputation again, which should serve as a warning to us not to become the target of the opponents working in the form of Dr. Opiatus. The solid tartar salt, lug and salts, he says on page 850, may be volatilized by cohabitation with a volatile spirit. Such a volatile tartar salt rises and sublimates at medium temperatures. Supi, a volatile tartar salt, Laugen Sals is only granted to the artist with diligence and patience, not to others who avoid a long working time. Such a salt has great powers. Belmont's high regard consisted of an inducing invitation to experiments, which, however, did not give worthwhile results since they were done with ordinary wine spirit and not with the wine spirit of the experts. 
The inventor of that substance is Raymond Lull, and Weidenfeld gives us the method. Sal tartari volatile lulei. Tartar salt wine seen as calcin for three days until it turns white. Then it is dissolved in the not yet rectified spiritus vini philosophici, heated for two hours in the ash bath, and the solution is drained. The residue is again calcined, repeatedly treated in the manner until it is totally dissolved. The solutions are distilled in the water bath and the distillate is reserved. The residue is placed in the ash bath for three hours to remove the phlegm. Then the reserved water is poured onto the residue and distilled. This is repeated until the whole substance turns into an oil. Further treatment now follows. On this oil, you pour six times as much aqua vitae rectificata, digest it for several days in balneo, and distill it at low temperatures in the ash bath until no more veins appear. As soon as the veins disappear, you take off the collector with the distillate and close it tightly. For now develops the spiritus animatus, which is extracted at higher temperatures. The residue is ground, digested with four parts aqua vitae, and then distilled. Of the residue, a small portion is placed on a red-hot plate, and if it glows like wax without smoke, it is a sign of success. If that does not occur, the process has to be repeated until that sign happens. On this residue, you pour spiritus animatus and let it congeal in the balneum, after which you evaporate the phlegm, which acts like pure water. Then you add fresh spirit and repeat that until the residue has absorbed all the alcohol, a sign of which is that if you place some of it on a red-hot plate, most of it will dissipate in fumes. Now the substance is ready for sublimation, which is done at higher temperatures. The sublimate serves to fortify the spiritus vini fifo sofici. We know that the potassium carbonate as such cannot be volatile, which means that the sal tartari volatile is no longer a potassium carbonate, but a potash salt treated with spiritus vini philosophici, and thus transformed and whose composition remains to be explored. EXPL and not I0N of the secret of the wine spirit of the ADEPTS. In the second part of the mineral solvents, Weidenfeld sheds light on the secret of the spiritus vini fifo sofici, which explains it to an extent. Different descriptions in that regard combined provide the following information. The secret material for the philosopher's stone, which has been hidden behind many names. Prima material lapidus is calcined and dissolved in distilled wine vinegar. The solution is evaporated until it takes the thickness of a gum. From that, first you distill a tasteless water with gentle temperature. When white vapors appear, another recipient is attached and the aqua ardens is obtained. This water has an extremely strong taste and at times a stinking smell. T. Dye here for it is called aqua fetens menstruum fetens. If the distillation continues at higher temperatures, a red vapor and finally red drops appear. You let the temperature gradually die down and keep the distillate in a tightly closed glass so that the volatile spirit may not disappear. The residue in the retort is black as soot. It is strewn on a stone and ignited at one end with glowing coal. Within half an hour, the fire spreads over the whole residue and gives it a yellow color. Then it is dissolved in disacetyl vinegar evaporated to a gum-like consistency, and then distilled. This is repeated often, until the biggest portion is reduced to liquor. This liquor S poured into the first distillate where it digests for days, and then is distilled. First appears the aqua ardens on top of which floats a white oil. This distillate is rectified seven times VNTL, a linen soaked with it, and ignited will burn. A yellow oil remains which is distilled at stronger temperatures. The sublimate in the neck of the retort is allowed to flow onto a steel plate in a cold place. To the filtered liquor, you pour some aqua ardens, whereby a green oil separates on the surface, which is taken off. Now the distillation continues. First comes water, then a thick black oil. As soon as white fumes appear, another collector is attached and the whitish distillate is extracted with medium temperature until a thick oily substance, like melted pitch, remains. This black substance is treated further until the residue is exhausted, but more explicit explanation is unnecessary. Ripley says that the menstruum fetens derived from the aforementioned gum contains three substances. The AUA ardens, which burns like ordinary wine soiree tea when ignited. Two, a thickish white water. The lac virginum via depths. Three, a red oil. The blood of the green lion of the adepts. He says that nobody ever spoke this openly about it and he fears the wrath of God and the experts. With that, says Weidenfeld, he revealed a big secret of the trade. The experts in their practical directions did openly discuss and teach the use of the Vindon Philosophicum, but how it could be prepared was kept secret. Ripley is the first and only one who says that the key to all of chemistry lies hidden in the Nenster, greater than UW and Fotens with its lac virginum and the sanguis lay, was when kept in mild digestion for 14 days, their results. The Vindabun Rubon E.T. Azi B.W.N. Louis. And to confirm this, 
He adds that from the menstruum foetans, the aqua vitae rectificata luci are prepared. The source material, the prima materia, has different names to hide the secret. The experts work some in metals, some in metallic salts and ores. The Leo Veritas name comes from its green solution. It is dissolved in sulfuric acid for cleaning, and it yields tungsten yellow crystals during evaporation. The prepared prime material is then calcined until red, thus eliminating the acid. Then it is dissolved with distilled vinegar and thickened to a gum-like consistency. The distillation of which provides the spiritus vini physisofici. The facts that, one, the prime material, calcined until red, is dissolved in vinegar forming an acetate salt. The black residue in the retort can be ignited in smolders, a characteristic of acetate salts. Three, the distillation provides a spirit that burns like ordinary alcohol and also provides a volatile oil, indicate clearly that nothing else is being taught than the preparation of the acetone. For better understanding, it might be good to give Wiedenfeld's presentation of the nature of the Spiritus Vini Physisofici, according to his remarks given here and there. The Spiritus Vini Physisofici, Spiritus Vini Luciani, is the basis, the beginning, and the end of all solvents in the secret chemistry. It is, depending on the various degrees of its power, the weakest, one or the strongest. It is the weakest when it dissolves by its mere oiliness, unctuositas, only the fatty parts, part is unctuosus, of the vegetabilia. While leaving everything else undisturbed, it becomes the strongest one, the more its oiliness is moderated by the acids, thus homogenizing it with dry fatty materials and the pure sides. Due to this homogeneity, the solvents of the adepts differ from the ordinary solvents in as far as they stay with the dissolved materials, and together with them are transformed into a third, therefore a chemical, solution. The spiritus vini fifasofici appears in two forms, either as an oil floating on the top, or as ordinary wine spirit that mixes with the phlegm, but that may be separated by simple distillation, and that when ignited after rectification will burn. They are, however, not two, but only one, different only in fineness and purity. With the ordinary wine spirit, it has in common that during distillation the phlegm goes first, which is separated in the same manner. The aqua ardens, the first distillate, loses its watery form and concentration during distillation, and finally segregates an oil floating on the surface. This oil is dried through continued distillation and sublimated like a volatile salt through strong temperatures. The oily spiritus vini philosophici extracts only the oily essences of the vegetabilia and divides through simple distillation into two different parts, two oils or fats, of which one is the essence. And the other is the body. By further digestion with spiritus vini philosophici, they are irrevocably reunited, whereby the spirit not only increases but it is also modified to better dissolve dry material by the dry, eridae, components of the oily body. The preparation of the Spiritus Vini Fifosophici is the most secret, most difficult, and most dangerous work in all of the secret chemistry. The menstrua vegetabilia prepared with it are sweet, without any corrosives, and dissolve the materials mildly. There are different ways to prepare the oleum, or the Essentia Vini, from the Vino Philosophico. Depending on the methods used, there are differences in preparation time as well as in smell and color. Only when a mineral or metallic material has been dissolved in it is the smell that pleasant. This first of all, dissolvent serves also as a medication with the name Essentia or specific WN ad vitam longum. According to the rule of the Chemia Adepta, Essentia Essentium Confacit become therefore easily essences for other material prepared for medical use and are given then special names. Paracelsus, for instance, names these Afus vini di pino, de celidonia, essentia melissae, etc. The spirit, vini philosophici without condensing, has no dissolving power over the dry materials, arida. This condensing is the secret of the trade, difficult and tedious. It is best done with honey, sugar, manna, salts and herbs, and volatile salts. The highest degree of condensing and effectiveness is achieved by combining it with acids and mineral salts, whereby the menstruator thanua mineralia are formed. Paracelsus' descriptions are only vague and incomplete, as was his way, but Weidenfeld makes them somewhat more understandable. Take the Essentia Musae de Vita Longa C3, C5, digested for 40 days, then through cohobation. The Melissa is the two compo, nents are separated, creating the Quinta Essentia, which is the elixir of life. After extracting the alcohol in its separation, then the Vinum Salutis appears with which the philosophers have been working for centuries without any results. Many of those, he says, mockingly, who have followed Raymond, have used quite some barrels of wine in order to find the Quinta Essentia Vini, but they got nothing but a vinum adustum. 
which was used improperly instead of the Spiritus Vini. The fact that Paracelsus, however, didn't know the Spiritus Vini Liliani and that he also used it can be taken from the same description of the Spiritus Vini, Davida Zanga, C3, C9. The wine is digested for months in horse manure. Then you see a very thin and pure layer like a fat on the surface, which is the Spiritus Vini. Everything underneath is phlegm. This fat, when digested alone and spiritly, is highly effective for longevity. The Spiritus Vini Philosophiae is dissolved by the acid with the strongest heat, and therefore it must be made certain that not too much is poured at a time, and that the distillation has to be done with extreme care. The menstrua are stronger depending on how often they have been extracted by the acid which weakens through dissolution. They are called Nostra or Physosophica or Acetunum Philosophicum Aqua Fortis Nostra, Spiritus Vitrioli, Alice Nostra, etc. The menstrua minerawa have a stinking smell, a corrosive taste, are mostly milky and turbid, and dissolve materials with extreme power and heat, since they have the spiritus vini philosophici as a base, however. They are as permanent as the latter, but not immediately the first time, but after repeated cohobation. Continued. Cohobation will make them sweet, and when the acid is taken away again, it turns back into what it was before, i.e. spiritus vini philosophici. The acid cannot destroy the nature of it, but only helps reduce the size of the particles through permeation, thus making them easier to dissolve. The menstrua that are not prepared with the emeditate prime material of the spiatis vini philosophici, but with the alcohol and acids which have been cleansed by circulation and distillation, stink less and are less milky, and the acetum philosophion prepared in this manner is very light. The menstrua mineralia do not only dissolve the metals, but also make them volatile. The experts use them to speed up the work, and Paracelsus rightfully took over the monarchy of the Arcanes by not only adding a final touch to these shortcuts, but also by introducing these menstrua minerawa with such talent into medical application that his students could hardly hope to improve it any further. T-H-E-A-C-E-T-0-N-E. -E -E. The wine spirit is chemically always the same, but technically and physiologically it is different depending on its preparation from grain, rice, potatoes, wine, etc. The same holds true for the acetone depending on the various bases of the acetate salts. That is why I will give the individual descriptions as follows. L-acetone from zinc, Resper from mineralgeist, zinc flowers were dissolved in a distilled wine vinegar, then filtered and evaporated to oil consistency when removed from the fire. The substance coagulates, forming a salt. This was put into a glass retort and distilled. First it was flowing, then it started to pass OVR like a secret wine spirit in fine veins, however tasteless. Then, da followed. A thick and reddish water. With strong heat, the whole substance swelled up, and from it rose a ghost-like spirit snow, which deposited in large amount, a thumb's thickness, and which fell down in some parts due to its volume. That which penetrated the receiver's paper seal had a smell as pleasant as Bernhard von Trevis has described it in his left-out word, and I was quite surprised. After everything had cooled off, a thin coat with silver white shine and prettier than oriental pearls appeared all around. It could be touched with the fingers and had a smell like camphor. Glauber, fern, fill, 2 to HP 99. Also mixes the zinc acetate with sand, distills, notices, however, only that first a tasteless phlegm, then a subtle alcohol. And finally, a yellow and red oil passover. Left out, VJRD, bourbon demissum, is the nair emitted by the adept of the secret material which is not nard in it and it is therefore note, worthy that Riesper often names the zinc, thus explaining the secret Fontina Bernhardi, his solvent. Acetone from lead acetate. The experts work much with lead, and Basilius Valentinus says that the philosopher's stone has its origin solely in lead. He also says that from the lead sugar, a red. Oil is prepared, but he gives no further direction. Lead sugar lead acetate, HWN. The first clear description can be found in Quercetinus. Pharmacopoeia P53, the important thing in this description of the wine spirit of the experts is that for the first time lead is definitely mentioned while the experts had always kept us in the dark about the basis. The lead sugar gives a highly burning water during distillation which has a stronger taste than wine spirit. The recipient is filled with white fumes and finally an oil as red as blood follows. From this liquor ardens, which ignites faster than wine spirit. A spirit which is even more etherous may be separated with low fire. The black residue is calcined the salt extracted and crystallized, then it is soaked with the etheric spirit that much, that a fume rises when you throw it on a glowing plate. Through sublimation you obtain the terra fosiata philosophatwa, which has a shine stronger than that of oriental pearls. When the red oil is added to this terra fosiata and combined with it through repeated cohobation and distillation, 
there results the true solvent of nature and the quintessence of magnificent power. This quintessence is the true and living clearest source in which the Vulcan washes Phoebus, the gold, and cleans it of all impurities and creates the means to fortify the strength of life, improves everything weak, and renews the power of youth. Oleum Saturn, Luli, from Enfire and Sassan Blaise Vineyard, page 146. Silver litharge is boiled with distilled vinegar arid, the solution is evaporated. The salt obtained is filled into half of a retort, Anna. The excess moisture is extracted using a gentle fire. As soon as white vapors are observed, a large recipient should be attached and the fire gradually increased, which will cause a small flow, like a milk-white oil, to rise in veins, which dissolves in the recipient like a hyacinth-colored oil and whose smell resembles the spike oil. This is the secret oil of which Raymond Lullius did not say much more than. Ex plumbo negro extraditor oleum philosophorum are coloris vel quasi et sicas quad in mundo nihil sesias io estem. On top of the residue in the retort, you can place glowing coals and it will catch fire like dry gras. It can be dissolved again with vinegar, the ash, and the above process may be re-eated. You take this oil, which Raymond Lullius calls his wine, and put it in a small flask over a water bath, so that the spirit rises in small threads like the wine spirit. You distill until large drops appear in the helm, which is an indication that the rest is only phlegm. This is removed, and at the bottom remains a precious oil, wick which dissolves the gold and is good for all internal and external woods. It is even a potable gold. Therefore, Ripley, 89 of the present of the preface to his Telf Gate says, a gold-colored oil is extracted from our subtle red lead, of which Raymond says that is, is more precious than gold. Because when he was near death in his old days, he prepared from this the orum potabile, and he regained his strength. The burning water which also passes over is far more combustible than gunpowder, and it dissolves silver into fine crystals which can be melted with a lamp fire, in which, like the silver, stands up to all tests. Aqua Paradis, Johannes Hollandi, Opus Saturni C12, lead sugar, completely purified, is distilled first with gentle and later with stronger fire until the material passes over red as blood and thick as oil and sweet like sugar with a heavenly smell. The residue is treated with distilled vinegar and in the same manner distilled, and this is repeated until everything is distilled into a red oil. S-P-I-R-I-T-U-S Arden Saturn Begini Tyrosin Chem, 1616, C4P, 139. You keep the lead sugar for month in gentle heat so that it is in constant flux and then it is distilled from a well-looted retort. The smell is so pleasant that it fills the whole room and exceeds the pleasant smell of all vegetabilia. On the distill it floats a yellow oil and a blood red oil settles to the bottom. Through repeated distillation the phlegm is separated and the pleasant smelling spirit is saved. Spirit is saturnal, agricos, amarkung zu pops chem, ours TIP 422, Lead sugar is digested with good spiritus vini for weeks in the steam bath. Then the spirit is extracted, and a nice thick liquor remains. This liquor is mixed with pure sand and per grade is distilled from a retort, giving us a nice white spirit and a nice yellow and a red oil. The alcohol and the oil must be rectified together from a glass retort in a steam bath. First the spirit passes drop by drop. You see no veins or stripes. Then follows a yellow oil. Another recipient is connected and well looted. Otherwise, the fine vaporous aroma, more pleasant than amber and musk, will be lost. If the yellow oil is over distilled, the phlegm will appear in many snow white streams. Then another recipient must be connected and all phlegm pass through. There finally comes a nice red oil, whereby a higher temperature is necessary because it is heavy and does not rise easily. Q-R-N-T-A-S-E-N-T-I-A-S-A-T-U-R-N, Agricola 1. P, 242... The process is the same as above. The spirit and the oil are individually rectified one more time. The black residue in the retort is calcined with high temperatures until it is snow white, then it is dissolved and crystallized with distilled vinegar. This salt is kept to digest with a previously rectified spirit for eight days in a steam bath. Then it is distilled, whereby most of the salt will rise. The distillate is poured back onto the residue. Then it is again digested and distilled. And this is repeated until the whole sal volatile has passed over in gestalt, in the form of spirit. Now the rectified red oil is added, whereby the two are inseparably mixed and make an extremely tasty medicine. Red oil from lead, experimenter de Kunstuka, was in 789, teach IP 150. Lead sugar from a glass retort filled up to one quarter 
is distilled in the sand cupel. At first you get a very sour spirit. After that the recipient is changed and the temperature raised. Then follow brown stinking drops which must pass until all humidity disappears. During this time the substance in the retort will have risen somewhat and will appear black and layered like an empty wasp nest. The temperatures are increased in ruby red, pleasant smelling sweet drops appear. During the first experiment the retort had ruptured so that very little of these drops could be saved, but the beautiful balsam odor filled the house and the whole street. S P I R I T U S A C E T L Ardens, Cheris Pharmacop, Royal P775. You distill lead sugar at first with gentle and later with stronger heat. The distillate is rectified with mild temperatures so that first the burning alcohol passes over, followed by the phlegm, leaving a purple red liquid which you very inappropriately call oleum ceterni, and which does not have a very strong acidity. The distillation of the lead acetate was disappearing from chemistry until in more recent times Chenevix picked it up again, giving cause for further studies of the acetone with his esprit pyrocetique. Mainly the acetone itself was studied and little attention was paid to the other products than had been the case. In the old chemistry, when extra care, patience, and persistence were used, which is why Weidenfeld calls the preparation of the Spiritus Vini Luiani the most difficult task. Three, acetone from C-O-P-P-E-R, Spiritus Aeruginis Basil, Valentui, P-834. Pure crystallized verdigris is calcined until it starts to become reddish. Then you take two parts of it, one part pebble stones, which have been cleansed repeatedly in vinegar, rub them together, fill them into a fogged up glass retort, attach a large and well looted collector, apply medium fire for a while day and night, and then increase the fire for a day and night, so that at first greenish white alcohol and after a long time, occasional red drops will appear. The fire has to be maintained until everything is passed over. The distillate is mildly rectified in the water bath so that the phlegm disappears and a heavy red oil remains at the bottom. Spiritus aerogelinellus, Swell for Appendix Ad Animaphers, Asphatic Lacop, 1 e 685, P51. Spiritus Vini Rectificatus is two or three times distilled over crystallized verdigris. Then the crystals from a fogged up retort are distilled in an open but gentle fire until all. Spirit is passed over and subsequently rectified. Zwelfer, moved by his conscience, gave away the secret of this spirit, and he also praised its chemical and medical powers. He compared it with the liquor alkahest because when these substances were gently dissolved, they could both be retracted with. Also identical strength, he recommended them especially for the dissolution of pearls, corals, and crab eyes, as well as for the preparation of the tinctura ex vitro antimony and tinctura martis ad stringens. This caused a bitter dispute spiced with Latin crudities with Otto Tachinius, who said that the spiritus origines is nothing but a distilled vinegar and that Basilius Valentinus had already described it. Borahov II declared it an acetic acid, however, the strongest that could be obtained from vinegar. Chenevix S. Examination D. eyed the matter. The Spiritus aerogenes is not a pure acetic acid because it contains 017, a flammable acetic spirit because of its volume. And with this, he justified Zwelfer. The two Gerosneus distilled the copper acetate into four parts. The first part was light colored and had a faint odor. The second part had a stronger smell and dark color. The third one was darker yet in color and had a stronger smell of flammable acetic spirit. The fourth one was slightly yellow and contained a rather large amount of flammable acetic spirit than Erd's Kimi von Fechner 4. P. Acetone from Ron. Agricosa Z. P. The blackish yellow distillation residue of isenvitriols, ferrous sulfate, is repeatedly extracted with the help of distilled vinegar. The solutions are evaporated until a green liquor remains. This is mixed with calcinated pebbles and then the distillate is digested for some time, then the distilled. Phlegm is carefully extracted and the residue is twice rectified from the sand bath, resulting in a beautiful sweet oil. According to Chevenix, the distillate of iron acetate contains flammable acetic spirit if you consider the volume. Five, acetone from S-T-I-B-N-I-T-E, tinctura et ola U-J-T-I antimony rogeril baconis, Deutsches Theat PWN Chemic, third P, 207, Finely pulverized tidnite ore is individually placed in aqua rea. As soon as it is dissolved, it is extracted and the residue is cleansed. This residue is digested with distilled vinegar for 40 days in a water bath when it gets a color as red as blood. The clear liquid is poured off and fresh vinegar is added and left to digest for 40 days. This must be done four times. The residue is discarded. The solutions are placed together into a flask. The vinegar is distilled off and again cohobated, or if it is too weak, Fresh vinegar is added.
and after dissolution is distilled off again. The residue is washed with sweet water until all sharpness is gone. The substance which turns bright red is dried in the sunlight or in gentle fire. To this red powder you add well-rectified spiritus vini and leave it completely in a water bath for days to dissolve. The solution is placed in a flask with a helm and a water bath. A receiver is attached and the alcohol is distilled at low temperatures. The alcohol is again added, again distilled, and this procedure is repeated until the alcohol rises in several colors over the helm. That is when high temperature is needed to make the pure alcohol rise to the helm and then drip into the collector as a blood red oil. This is the most secret method of the wise for the distillation of the highly praised oil of antimony, a noble, strong, pleasant smelling and powerful oil. The distillate, the mixture of wine spirit and oil, is placed in a flask with a helm and the alcohol is completely distilled off in the water bath which may be determined by some drops of oil passing over. The alcohol will keep well because it still contains great power from the oil dissolved in it. In the flask you find the blood red oil which glows at night like coal. It is used for alchemical improvement of metals. The wine spirit, the tincture antimony, is a very powerful medication. When you suffer from podagra and take three drops dissolved in wine on an empty stomach, the pain will subside. The next day follows a tough, thick, and stinking sour sweat, especially in the joints. And on the R&D day, even without medication, it is an easy purgation. It is just as helpful with other serious injuries. Q-R-N-T-A-S-E-N-T-I-A-S-O-L-E-U-M-A-N-T-T-M-O-N-I-I-B-A-S-I-L-I-V-A-L-E-N-T Triumphal Chariot of Antimony Trans By Kirkering P over very finely pulverized vit P-U-J-N antimony you pour distilled vinegar and under frequent stirring to avoid in the simulation. It is digested with GNTL heat until the vinegar is tincted bright yellow. This is repeated until the vinegar does not color anymore. The solutions are filtered and the vinegar is distilled off in the water bath until it is almost dry. This has to be done extremely carefully because the heat that is too high spoils the preparation. The reddish yellow powder has to be dried in the sun in mild temperatures. The powder is repeatedly washed, adulterated, so that all acid disappears. Then it is finely ground in a lightly warm glass mortar. Then highly rectified wine spirit is poured over it up to fingers high. It is digested and a bright red tincture results. This tincture is digested for one month and subsequently with a special method, according to the microscope, Basil Baleni, P109 by mixing it with Terra Sigiwata. It is distilled over. It gives a lovely sweet medication in the form of a beautiful red oil, which is the Quinta Essentia Antimony. 6. Astone from Potassium. Agricola II P15. Saturated potassium acetate liquid is kneaded into balls with pottery clay. These are dried in the air and then distilled from a retort. A strong but very lovely smelling spirit passes over, white as milk, which settles everywhere on the sides of the recipient, like a volatile salt. You let it stand for 24 hours and it dissolves into a nice clear yellow oil. Pot. Exorcet. Chim. The terrafoliat, tart B, mentions that when he rectifies part potassium acetate with parts vinegar times, during the fourth time, half the salt is passed over and volatized. Seven, acetone from acetate natron. Upon my initiative in 1840, the pharmacist Clower took upon himself its proportion and reported the following. Four pounds acetate natron gave 20 ounces distillate. The distillation out of the sand bath was completed within days. The distillate was distilled in the water bath, first the acetone with... Some water passes over the acetone passing over at 55 degree. The further stronger distillation provides water, acetic acid, and some oil, metacidin. The residue is a dark brown oil of thick consistency, which dissolves easily in the acetone. In order to keep the acetone water free is rectified over calcium chloride. Six ounces of water containing acetone, gained from four pounds of acetate natron, provided four ounces of water-free acetone with the following characteristics. A colorless thin fluid with a fine, penetrating smell, similar to the etheric acid, as together. 2. Mixable with wine spirit and ether in all proportions. Specific weight o. Easily ignited, it burns with a very bright and little sooting flame without residue. The acetone yielded the following deposits. 1. With nitrate mercury oxide, yellow and copios. 2. With nitrate mercurous oxys, black. 3. With copper sulfate blue. 4. With copper acetate. F5 with ferrous oxide sulfate, greenish, later turning yellow 6, with sulfate maginoxidol, L7 with acetate maginoxidol, F reddish, 8 with chlorine gold segregation of metallic gold, 
9. With ferric chloride, a gelatine-like substance. 10. With mercury chloride. The acetone is combined with the two oils and has been prescribed by me as a medication under the name Spurgreater Thanatus Acet Oleosis. 8. Acetone from C-A-L-C-I-U-M-A-C-E-T-A-T-E, -A -A -E, Pottery Op, P612. The corals are dissolved in distilled vinegar. Solution is vaporized and the dry salt is placed in a looted retort. The phlegm is removed first with a low temperature. Then with a different recipient, the spirit is distilled over along with a small amount of red oil, both very pleasant smelling and bright red. Corsitanus received six ounces of spirit from one pound of the coral salt. In an experiment made in 1841, where acetone was prepared from calcium acetate, a product was achieved which differs from the one made from acetate natrin. It did not smell as spicy, but like pyrolignite. The taste was less fine. The empyreumatic oil tasted burned and had a stronger smell. Therefore, it was not used as a medication. In regard to the chemical characteristics of the acetone, I observed the following. In November, 1861 in the pharmacy, I found a few ounces of an old test of spiritus acid oleosis. It was colored yellowish and had its full odor. A sample of this when combined with sulfuric acid turns dark red immediately, while this change in color occurred much later when the acetone from a chemical plant was used. I placed the glass, which is closed with a ground glass stopper, on the back stove. After 14 days, parts of it had evaporated and a ruby red oil had segregated on the surface. The latter smelled like acetone. The taste is bitter and lasting. It discolored litmus paper cinnabar red, while pure acetone showed only a weak acid reaction after several minutes. I added half an ounce of pure acetone, which dissolved the oil instantly. I returned the glass, still protected with the gyps, to the back stove. After some time with the easing of the gyps and the partial evaporation of the liquid, the ruby red oil forms again and has remained since then, even when removed from the heat. When some drops are mixed with water, it separates quickly and settles to the bottom, but the taste of the water is bitter like the oil, and it smells like acetone. Me DRCINA, L-A-P-P-L-I-C at I-0 and of A-C-E-T-0 nay. I will not mention the general acclamations for its use against numerous illnesses from the alchemical literature, but I will limit myself to Kirkering and the experiments of Agricola, who specialize in this matter. Currenta Essentialium Antimoni Basilia, Kirkering. Triumphal Chariot of Antimony P. A 21-year-old lady with hydropsy had swollen up terribly. She took this medication twice a day. After 20 days, she had sweated so much that her body had shrunk half an EL. She lost quite an amount of urine in that time, and the sweat was quite wonderful. The medication does not have the same effect as other diaphoretica, which, with the first dosage, causes sweating, but it only opens up the skin on the first day. It causes mild sweat on the second day, and on the third day, the sweat increases. Only on the fourth and following days does one practically swim in water, so that finally the sweat drips through the bed onto the floor. This is, says Kirkring, when a knowledgeable doctor is needed, because the club of Hercules does not help much when it is not in the hands of a Hercules. Acetone from iron. Agricola 1, P425. 1. Lung ulcers. You prepare a syrup of 2 drachm per 10 ounces of syrup, of that oftentimes a large amount of hazelnut is placed. On the tongue. It helps with the cough, increases the phlegm, and makes the breathing easier. A 36-year-old man was suffering from a severe cold, heavy chest depression with the danger of suffocation. He had tried managed medications without improvement. When he used the chest rub, much pus disappeared. He took it for one month, and his health was completely restored. A 60-year-old girl had been coughing up blood and pus for two years, and she was all consumed. She took the medication only three times a day and recuperated completely within two months. Two. Against poisonous stings. A young Snefford was stung in his left thigh while sleeping. The spot was brown and as big as a pence, and it hurt very much. The following day, the thigh was brown and swollen. Warm acetone was placed on it, and after two hours, the swelling and the pain were less. After a fresh application and two more hours, the pain and swelling had completely disappeared, and the boy could walk again. 3. In the case of paneritium, the application eliminates the pain within in one hour, and the sore opens up soon. Agricola himself, during a trip, had an infectious sore, that is an isopod sore, between two fingers, and he suffered a lot of pain. Several medications did not help. When he got home, he applied the acetone. The pain disappeared so that he could sleep again, and after a few days, the sore broke open and healed quickly. Acetone from Lida Spiritus Saturni, BP-1. 
Again, stinging in the spleen with distension, six drops. In extra. Phyllisis. Two. Kidney injection, whereby the fat melts and emaciation follows. A farmer always had fatty urine, as if melted butter had been poured in it at the same time. He felt a lot of heat in his back and his energy and body were diminishing. He was losing weight on his hops and was always feverish. He took drops Spiritus Saturni in Aqua Plantaginus at night. After four times, he was healed. Three, Gonorrhea Virulenta. A noble man was suffering from this for some time. He felt immense heat and thought that nothing but abscissio membri could help. Spiritus Saturni with Aqua Sambucci was applied and soon extracted the heat. At the same time, injections with this were made. He was healed in days. Uh, four, when applied against paneratia, it helps very quickly. Acetone from potassium acetate, BP part acetone part spiritus vini part oz. Vitrioli are digested for weeks until it becomes a lovely and palatable medicine for many sicknesses. One, it is a very strong invigoration for the stomach. 12 drops in the first spoon of soup. The stomach may be full of phlegm. This will divide the phlegm and lead it away without any other medications. It eliminates the stomach fever completely if a mild catharsis is needed, and especially if the ill person does not. Feel very cold or very hot. This fever usually lasts for some time because of the persisting phlegm in the stomach. The phlegm also causes permanent headaches. Three, against the stone. A preacher was suffering from strong stone pain, and all medications increased the pain so that he did not want to take any more. Agricola told him that this medication does not push the stone, but opens the ways and dissolves at the same time the stone in the kidneys, so that it will pass without pain. He took 10 drops every day with a spoon of soup, and after using it for one month, the pain was gone, and the urine very thick and turbid with bright red deposits. Four, in the case of hot pestilent fevers, it is a powerful means and resists the poison because it forces strong sweating when L's minus one scruples in aqua or aetotheria ali is given. You also add one minus three drops of essentia croi so that the heart is not overcome by the poison. It is especially suitable for children because of its pleasant smell and taste. Five, against early or not too long contracted podagra, every day 15 drops in aqua ivae arthesiae. It locates the problem area and causes pain there. That is when that area needs also external application. In the case of pain and hollow teeth, you take syrup in warm vinegar into the mouth and the pain is quickly eliminated. Tinctura antimonothodenly. Remarks AMP experiments for the enrichment of mediane AMP medical science. TH11, P84. Thedon prepared his tincture according to the instructions. Of an alchemical writing as follows, pounds stibnite are melted together to a liver with pounds of potassium and saturated with Berliner quartz of concentrated wine vinegar. The substance was evaporated until dry. Then alcool vini was added and distilled in the water bath. The wine spirit that had passed over was poured back onto the substance, again distilled, and this process was repeated 30 times, whereby the lost spirit was always replaced. 16 quarts alcohol were used up and hardly two pounds tincture were produced. This tincture was digested for months in the ash bath, during the first month with one, during the second month with, and then with lamp fires, leaving one pound of tincture. He administered this medicine in the case of glandular blockage, externally as well as internally, and the effect exceeded his expectations. Eight, 10 drops taken daily caused sweat, increased urination, and UPN increasing the dosage, soft stool, and mild laxation. It eliminated the pedagral pains, help with clogged intestines, but the most important thing was that it achieved in three cases the complete division of hidden cancers, and in two cases. It helped promising good hope for improvement. In the third part, page 269, we find Dr. Walter's observations from Leafland, according to which induration in both breasts caused originally by hardened milk, was completely healed. The famous witchman held the medication in high esteem against breast browning. The only patient whom he had the rare fortune of healing of the severe sickness had been saved through the use of medicine for a year through two fontanelles in the thighs. Thedon says nothing about the color, taste, and smell of the medication. As undoubtful as the medical effects were, as doubtful were the views of the chemists in regard to these effects. It was called stibnite tincture. The chemical test showed, however, that it contained no stibnite. Also, the procedure was so expensive, complicated, and time-consuming that the production encountered many obstacles. Gren said, it is a solution of the leaves earth in wine spirit. The few stibnite particles which it might contain are not worth the painful preparation. And according to Westrom, it was nothing but a solution of the potassium acetate, which after the long torment, as he states sympathetically, has turned combustible. 
not without irony, says Elfers that it can be found in those pharmacies where the pharmacists do not have much chemical knowledge. And in Tromsdorf's journal, it was said that this ineffective tincture deserves to be banned from the pharmacies, which later actually happened. This shows how the chemists of those days were without knowledge of the breakdown of the acetate salts through dry distillation, which the alchemists of the 13th until the 17th century had activated with such patience and attention as the goal of their secret work. It is obvious that in the long way that Thieden went, a gradual breakdown of the potassium acetate with partial decomposition of the wine spirit and acetic acid is caused. And an effective medication is gained whose chemical examination will be the subject of today's analysis. My zero WN, observations concerning the application of acetone. Since 1840, I have used the acetone very frequently. Since it contained not only acetone, but also oils, if prepared according to the old way, I called it spiritus aceti oleosus, so it could be distinguished. The preparation was good, but it did not correspond completely to the description of the old chemists since it was lacking the praised pleasant smell, which might be due to the fact that the preparation used then let the substance mature through long and repeated digestion and distillation. Like wine when placed in a place with moistened rowan is refined by the warmth within months, as if it had been stored in bottles for years. As the old rules show, it is a very delicate operation whose basic rule is aisle mate while, hurry with patience. The dehydration of the acetone through distillation over calcium chloride is CHE 100% and levenically correct, but not the best for the medication. The pure acetone, like it can be obtained commercially, is not as strong, not in smell and taste, not in its medical effectiveness. Generally, I have noticed, one, the urine and stool get a terribly stinking smell like cat urine and cat stool. I observed that immediately at the start of my experiments with a lady who had the flu and for whom I had prescribed R. Spear, Aset, Olios, Drachm, 1, AQ, Destes, UNC, Tusser, Sacher, UNC, Semas, ounces, dot, J, miss, every two hours, one tablespoon. During the second night, she urinated, creating a stink that filled the whole room so that it had to be aired out. In the hallway where the night urine was placed, the stool smelled just as badly. The stink continued as long as she was still on that medication, which, however, became soon dispensable because of the improvement. In the case of a tailor in the last stages of consumption, the stink in the stool and the urine appeared already after one half drachms after one day. During the following days, it became even worse and appeared also in the phlegm. In the case of a nervous, hysterical woman, five drops gave her urine the special smell within half an hour. An old lady received R. Spiracet, Ozeos, Syrup, Dimid, Aqua Destes, UNC, Duasar Sachar, UNC, Dimid, Ms. Every three hours, one tablespoon. No change in the urine. After the medication was used up, I prescribed. R. Spear. Aset. Ozeos. Drachm. 1. AQ. Dest. UNC. 11. Sir. Sachar. Musees. Gom. Ara. Da. AUNC. Dimid. Ms. Every three hours, one tablespoon. During the night, the stool smelled terrible, and this condition persisted for as long as she was taking the medicine. All ill persons were surprised by this. They believed, however, or let themselves be easily persuaded that damaging, rotten materials were segregated from the blood, and I thought it best for the experiments not to give any further explanation. The urine itself showed no changes. It was sometimes sour, sometimes neutral, sometimes light, sometimes turbid. In some cases, there was an increase in urination. Two, I noticed no effect on the sweat, where it appeared it was more a consequence of the development of the sickness. Three, a visible effect on the nerves was noticed. A policeman had a a severe case of meningitis spinalis, which had been treated with the hot iron and the strongest medicines. From this, he had retained a nuvalgy of the neck with continuing convulsive shaking of the head, which was worse when he was in an upright position, whereby the head and neck were pulled toward the back between the shoulders, causing severe pain. Consequently, he could never sit freely, but had to have something to lean his head against. In August 1840, when at the age of 57, and after several years of sickness, he started treatment with me. Until the end of December, I tried a homeopathic cure with high thinnings of buodana, nux vomica, coeculus without significant success. In January, he start dot eed with spiitis aceti oleosis. Soon some improvement showed. After weeks, he could sit for hours and play solo. At the end of February, the improvement had progressed so that he could sit freely and walk around. However, the head was still trembling, but it was not being pulled toward the back anymore. At the end of March, he could take short walks when the weather was nice and only longer walks posed a problem for the back. 
the trembling and shaking of the head had remained, giving a strange appearance. He had used the medication continuously. For three months, and since he was content with his condition, and his situation did not allow any further medical expenses, his treatment was ended. He kept the trembling of the head until his death in 1860. The hysterical woman, whose urine started smelling already hour after five drops of the medication were administered, felt a pleasant warmth in her stomach, which rose toward her head, causing much relief. The nausea and ache near the heart improved. The positive effect remained for the following days. The cramping in the limbs decreased. The dizziness decreased. The sleeping improved. There was strong urination with a distinct smell. A very nervous woman fainted for one hour. After eight days, when she still had not fully recovered, she took R. Infusrat, Valerian, UNC, 11, Spear, Aset, Oleos, Scrup, 1, Seer, Iran, UNC, Semis, Miss Every Two Hours, One Tablespoon. In the evening, she felt better and more alive and soon recuperated completely. Rheumatism. A child had rheumatic pain in the back of its head and neck with slight fever irritations. After three days, the child was not better. R. Spiracet, Oleos, Scrup, 1, Sir, Sachar, Me, Gummyara, AAUNC, Semis. After that, the child slept in the afternoon like after opium, and the pain disappeared during the following days. A lady suffering from frequent pain in her face felt the pain coming and took Spear, Aset, Oleos, Drachum, Dimid, Sir, Sachar, Drachum, Trez, Sir, Cinnamon, Drachum, Unam. Missed three times daily, one tablespoon. After that, the pain disappeared, but her head was slightly numb because, as she said, the medication was too strong. The taste was all hidden by the juice, but to her it still tasted like creosote. Probably some of that is the thick oil, but since creosote is a pain reliever, the medication must remain as is. In some cases, it increases the pain first, accelerates the development of the disease process, and brings out the rheumatism like the homeopathic process. A young girl had heart rheumatism. After two administerings of grain AU rum metallic WN precipitatum, the heart was free on the second day, however. A toothache appeared, which increased during the third day with pain in the head and ear of the left side. On the fourth day, no changes. Spear, aset, oleos, drops times daily. Fifth day, less pain. Sixth day, from early in the day, strong pain and aches. Ten drops per dosage. The whole night, less pain steady decrease of pain, and on the ninth day, they were gone. A woman had strong headaches, which continued through the night. Spear, Aset, Oleos. Internally and externally, an application of Spear, Aset, Oleos, Olalavar, Daldedrashm, one tinct, Kalen, Scrub, one, Miz to rub in. Subsequent relief and sleep through all the night. Third day, less pain, but in the afternoon, a renewed strong attack that lasted the whole night until the afternoon of the fourth day, then rest and a good night. Fifth day, no pain, good night. Sixth day, only slight pain that disappeared completely. A young girl experienced chill and swelling of the gums. Spear, aset, oleos. In the evening, her gums were better, but the lip was swollen with stinging pain in the skin at the forehead and the temple. Second day, chrysoplatose swelling of the nose, mouth, and cheek. All other pain disappeared. The medication without sweat and urine had obviously pushed the rheumatism onto the skin. Fourth day. Everything is better. During the night after a good sleep, severe chills. Fifth day in the afternoon, heavy sweating, beginning of menstruation, eight days too early. Sixth day, good condition. Five. In the case of feverish conditions, the spear. Aset. Oleos. Causes too much heat. A young female cook fell poorly for days and started having a headache in the forehead, stitches in the side, and fever. Spiritus Aset, Oleos, five drops every two hours. During the night, rheumatic pain in the face and teeth, while the head and side pains disappeared. Second day, the previous pain returns, also in the night. Third day, the whole morning shivering in the afternoon heat and thirst. Constant hallucinating, everything appears larger and stranger. When she closes her eyes, a figure appears that looks like a man in a coat without a head, which frightens her, also pains again. The medication was stopped. After eight days, the fever was gone, but the rheumatic pain remained in the breast, and there was also a feeling of oppression. Spear, Aset, Ol, Drasiamen, Dimid, AQ Distill, UNC, Duas, Sir, Sac, UNC, Unam, is one tablespoon every three hours. On the following day, she had felt all well. The medication had caused strong urination. A man had a potagris infection of the left wrist and fever, Spur, 
I said, Olios. Second day, pain in the knee and ankle of the left leg. Third day, additional pain in the right arm and elbow. Urine with strong, bright red deposits, coated tongue, no appetite. In the evening, higher fever with much thirst. The medication had apparently an effect of overheating and was discontinued. An experiment with pure acetone. In February 1862, an old but vigorous lady of 75 years suffered from acute rheumatism in the shoulders and in he back, which was extremely painful. After the fever was lowered on Feb, THI prescribed, our acetin per, drachm, unam, AQ, dest, UNC, duas, sir, for, or, mugam, Arab, EU, AUNC, dimmit, mis one tablespoon every hours. This was pure acetone from a chemical plant since the previous spiritus acidosis was no longer available in the pharmacy. The medication had the taste of acetone, but it did not taste unpleasant, and it gave the stomach the feeling of warmth. After the intake, the patient, who had always been suffering from hard stool, experienced soft, mushy stool with a terribly bad smell, but the urine had no smell. She took the medicine until March 2nd, that is for six full days. The mushy stool kept its awful smell. She was comforted with the explanation that the bad smell was due to the excreted rheumatism substance and that it was a good sign. She said, however, that the stink was unbearable, and since the rheumatism had not improved, the medication was discontinued. On the two following days, the stool was still the same, and only on the third day was it solid and without the acetone stink. The pain vacillated between less and more when other medication was used. On March 16th, I prescribed R. Infus, Rad, Valor, UNC, Duas, Cumdimid, Istan Per, Drachm, Unum, Sir, Arant, Drachm, Sex. This tablespoon times a day. The medication was given twice. After that, she had felt somewhat stronger. The stool had its smell again, but the pain remained unchanged. Therefore, on March 21st, I prescribed R. Tinct, Speedle, Tinct, Rhododender, LLA Drachm, Dimid, AQ, NUC, Warwick, UNC, Dimid, Seer, Sachs Drachm Duas, Ms. Four times a day, 25 drops. On May 22nd, 2024, she was completely pain free, but she slept unusually long and deeply during the day and at night and upon awakening on May 23rd, 2024. She felt like she was paralyzed in all limbs and the mobility was only gradually restored. For this threatening situation, she received Ammon, Carbon Pyruleos, GR, one three times daily. On May 26, 2024, the paralysis improved and the pain came back. For resuscitation, I prescribed R. Infus, HB, Rosmarin, UNC, Quatcher, Acetone per, Drachm, Unum, Sir, Sac, UNC, Dirid. Miss one tablespoon every two hours and externally I rubbed on Ewing, Nervin, with linum volatile. On May 28, 2024, there was increased improvement, light stool still without the specific smell. On May 29, 2024, the stool had once again the terrible smell. She was all upset that in such short time so much waster material had collected in her body because for days nothing similar had been felt. She must have become suspicious of the medication because she determined that she did not want to take any more of it and wanted to let good weather improve the situation. I, for my part, was content with my observations and agreed. After she stopped taking the medicine, she improved daily, but the rheumatic pains returned periodically and only after a long time did she regain strength. From this follows, one, the Aston Purim gives the stool a stinking smell just like Spiritus Acer, oleosus. Of course, this is only noticed if the discharge is done in the room. Two, three, it does not change the urine. It had no healing effect on the rheumatism like the Spiritus. Cete oleosus. Therefore, it appears that the etheric oil is essential for the medical constitution. A-N-T-I-P-Y-R-E-T, zero in poter, Second Petrus Poterius, who calls Friedrich Hoffman the Medicordon Sui Avi Principem 11, and whose opera Practica L. Chimica, he considered so instructive that in 1698 he published them with his preface, used a fever medication which he called antipyritin, and which he says is the only and most effective of all. He describes 24 fever cases that had been treated with it. These are Febris Ardens, F. Malignia, F. Biliosa, F. Hectica, F. Teriana Simplex, and Duplex and F. Cortana simplex and duplex. In some cases, only one dosage. In other cases, two were given per day. The healing took in most cases surprisingly little time, mostly just after a few days. Only in two cases did it take 10 to 14 days. It is remarkable that in the case of Tertiana duplex, a case of splenic tumor existed, 
which in one case was not completely eliminated, and in the second case, it even increased. These observations caused me in 1844 to prepare this medication and to experiment with it in the following situations. L. Sudor interim tius quotidianus, an old lady who had suffered from rheumatism for many years and who had a podagra node at the wrist, cati catarhalish, caris, gastric fever, which ended after three weeks so that she could leave the bed. That is when every afternoon a period of sweating set in which it first lasted for five hours and only gradually decreased. This sweating continued regularly for seven weeks and the medications used brought no change. Intermittently also rheumatic pains appeared. This was the first case where I prescribed the medication. In the evening, she took three drops of antipyretin. After that, she had at first a feeling of comfortable warmth through her whole body, then a tickling in all limbs, then she fell asleep and woke up after two hours sweating, whereupon she fell asleep again and sweated. The sweat was stickier than usual. Second day, uh, she felt very good and strong. In the evening, another dosage of antipyretin, after itching in the face, especially around the nose, tempting to be scratched, then sleeping with general sweat. Third day, in the evening, antipyretin. After that, only mild itching in the face, but consistent itching in the breast with a slight cough and expectoration. Fourth day, fairly well, the podagra lump has shrunk noticeably. No medication at night, good sleep at night. Fifth day, she feels well and in full power. Three dosages had been enough to cure a difficult illness quickly and thoroughly. Two, zoster, shingles. An old lady had a shingle on one side of the lower body and experienced the usually bothersome problems. On the third day, the blisters had a blackish bottom. Fourth day, high fever, weak feeling, benumbed of the head, the blisters turned blackish in several spots like gangrene. Antipyretin three drops. In the afternoon, much heat and sweat with bad headaches in the forehead, the rash became more painful, a pulse of 108. In the evening, decreasing discomfort, comfortable resting, a pulse of. At night, alternate sleeping and sweating. Fifth day, the rash is bright red, but some blisters are still blackish. After the antipyretin soon sweat appears on the forehead, then a big heat over all the body and a strong pulse of, followed by heavy sweating without thirst. All well in the night, constant sweating. Sixth day in the morning, still sweating, the blisters contain pus. Soon after the antipyretin, stronger sweat again, decreasing in the afternoon. The urine has a thick reddish deposit, a pulse of 100. Otherwise, she is quite well and hardly feels sick. During the night, she partially slept and constantly sweated. Seventh day, a pulse of 100, slight irritation. Antipyretin, followed by slight sweating and sedimental urine. The condition showed a change, however. She was very weak, slept a lot, had at times stinging in the side, and at night, dry heat with Thurston. Eighth day, increased weakness, a pulse of 108, dry tongue. Only now was I told that the patient had gotten up during the previous night while she was soaking wet from sweat. She had opened the house to arriving relatives and caught a cold in the process. The illness changed now into a severe nerve fever which ended in a huge decubitus, but she was lucky to survive. Febris gastrica nervosa. An old wash lady fell ill with chills, headache, and vomiting. Third day, milder chills, diarrhea, hallucinations. Fourth day, heat, weak feeling, bitter taste. Serum lactis, RA the afternoon and later again hallucinations, a restless night. Fifth day, mushy stool, taste less bitter. Antipyretin two drops. Soon after that, strong pinching in the body until the early evening without stool, fewer hallucinations. In the evening again, two drops antipyretin. Again, pinches in the body without stool, but not for as long, then three hours of sleep with heavy sweating, then sleep again. Sixth day, a pulse of 108, again antipyretin. In the afternoon, she got up and worked at washing until she was exhausted, but a relatively good sleep at night. No more hallucinations. Seventh day, everything is better. Antipyretin drop. Eighth day, she feels well again and strong. Four, suppressed hyper. Drawsels of the feet. A young girl had been sickly for six weeks due to the disappearance of her extremely heavy hyperhidrosis of her feet, and she started having fever with sour belching and pain in her body. Magnesia USTA. Second day, the gastric symptoms disappeared, but she experienced heavy pain in the whole chest area. In the evening, she took three drops of antipyretin, and soon afterwards, she vomited everything. Third day, sour belching. The stomach had not accepted the antipyretin because it had not yet been pure. Now an anti-gastric treatment was applied, and on the ninth day when things were better, but the chest pains persisted, three drops of antipyretin were administered in the evening. 
After that, she felt a knocking in her legs, which lasted for half an hour, followed by sleep, but no sweat. Tenth day, still chest pains, in the evening antipyretin. After that, again, hour of knocking in her legs, then sleep, but no sweat. Eleventh day, no more chest pains, but pain on the left side. In the evening antipyretin, after that one hour of knocking in her legs, then restless sleep because of the nagging pain in the side. Since the antipyretin did not achieve anything, other medications were administered, which finally made the hyperhidrosis of the feet reappear, thus restoring her health. 5. Rheumatismus acutus. A six-year-old boy suffered from fever, and on the third day, he felt pain in the knee. Fourth day, the right knee was swollen. The left one had pain and pains in the left side. The pulse was feverish. The pain was so strong that the boy cried loudly and screamed, causing the parents to be quite desperate. Our antipyret. GTT. Trez. AQ. Distill. UNC. UNE. M. Cum dimid. Sir. Sachar. Jachm. Una. Cum dimid. Ms. Every three hours, one child's spoonful. After that, a much better night, but no sweat. Fifth day. The pain spread to the feet and the hand. Lower fever. Mildly moist skin. Again, medication. Sixth day. Everything was better. Seventh day. Everything is good. Six. Schloss. Sciatica. A lady was suffering from ischias neurosa for eight days, which had increased each day and prevented her from sleeping. She had some fever, little appetite, more thirst. R. Antipyrate. GTT, sex, Musiel, GWNMI, ERA, Sir, Sacha R, Ebe, Drachm, Unam, Miss half in the morning, half in the evenings. Following the first intake, there was an improvement already in the afternoon, and after the second intake, she slept almost the whole night. Second day, mild pain, only a humming feeling in the legs, but she would not step on them. In the evening, one half of the medicine. Third day, improvement. Sixth day, improvement each day. She was able to walk a few steps. My departure to bad teplets interrupted the treatment. Seven, R-H-E-U-M-A-T-I-S-M-U-S dorsalers. A lady had caught a cold by getting up at night to help her sick husband. And she experienced very strong pain in the lower back, which also extended into the chest area. B, antipyretin GTT, 4th AQ, NUC, ROM, UNC, DIMID, SEER, DOTCOM, DROCHMANOM, MIS, every three hours, 20 drops. During the following days, the pain was left, and on the third day, it had disappeared. Sedativum. An hysterical lady took a dosage of antipyretin at night. After that, she slept more, had less sweat, much urine. On the second evening, again, antipyretin. After that, even better sleep, less sweat, much urine. But calm nerves. She thought the drops contained opium. A mentally retarded man suffering from hallucinations and general seizures slept calmly for hours after taking a dosage of antipyretin. And the following day, he did not speak confusedly anymore. 9. Exius duodeosogulos, an old but still energetic, slightly heavy lady, who had been suffering for years from a constant hissing, screaming, singing, and buzzing in her head, not her ears, experienced an accelerated tense pulse with stronger buzzing. She received three drops of antipyretin in the evening, and after that, she had a much worse night with increased screaming, which became even worse the next day. Obviously, the medicine had a negative effect, when Kremor Tartari was used, the blood rushing calmed down. The surprising positive and fast healing effect of the antipyretin, which I used also a lot without taking notes, made me value it highly and confirm my trust in it. Its preparation, Paterius had taken from Corsetinus, who gives it in the Pharmacopoeia page, under the title Antidotus Lysiparetos Antimony. It says, Soren Rubroi of 71 Antimony UNC. Of her, Soren Sulforis Susmatoiwad Perfectum Albitnam UNC 2. Misentor CW and Duplo Colchitaris Vitrioli Hungariti Ot Cipria IC Ter Sulimentor Habibis Flores Rubicundissimos Si Bene Operatus Fustris. Easy come acidate Vitrioli Veneris Primo. Dende CWN Veros A Ternia Therio Spiritu Ascentificantur. Isus Physosophicae Ascentificationis Si Casuaris Artem Medicinam Sus Sipicudam Cannabis Verum Antidotum Lysiparaton Omnis Generis Fibras. Bestiferis atium sedantem et extinquentem. S-I-I-D-D-D. Ot fifth gutsas de uh, idonio zicor propanareris. The description states, therefore, 1. Floris ruri antimony, floris sospheris and colchota are sublimated three times. 2. The sublimate is first treated with aciditas vitriu veneris, that is with acidum erigines, acetic acid from verdigris. Then, 3. It was made in essence with spiritus aetherius saturni, that is with acetone. 
Lemery prepared the floor as rubri antimony by sublimating two parts antimony crudi and one part ammonium. The sublimate is washed out. However, there is still retained one part ammonium. The Flores has a much nicer and higher color after the cleansing. I have asked the chemists repeatedly which preparation can be obtained by the sublimation, but none could give a decisive answer without analytical tests. In April 1860, the pharmacist Dr. Kayser tested antipyritin at my request. With hydrogen sulfide, a heavy black deposit develops, which turned out to be ferric oxide when treated with hydrochloric acid. In May, the same person took up the testing again in my presence, and the results were as follows. 1. 2. Ammonium sulfide, heavy black deposit, potassium ferrocyanide, greenish discoloration, adding of potassium ferric cyanide brought no changes. 3. Potassium ferric cyanide, immediately a blue color, when heated the blue flaked and the liquid turned grass green. The Berlin blue obtained with the potassium cyanide turned to grass green when potassium ferrocyanide was added. The black deposit obtained through the ammonium sulfide is dissolved in hydrochloric acid. Nitric acid is added to oxidate the ferrum, and the result is a yellowish liquid. When Kali caustic WN is added to segregate the oxide, a reddish yellow deposit of ferric oxide hydrate resulted. This deposit is filtered, cleansed, and added to hydrochloric acid. When potassium ferrocyanide is added, the Berlin blue results. Antipyritin is added to Argentum Nitti ICTWN, a flaky, cheesy deposit which dissolves immediately in ammonia, a sign of chloride. 7. Added to barium chloride, white deposit which does not dissolve in much water or nitric acid, a sign of sulfuric acid. Added to hydrochloric acid and hydrogen sulfide, added no change, therefore no antimony. 9. When added to potassium hydroxide, and when a glass stick moistened with hydrochloric acid is held above it, white fumes, a sign of ammonium. Dr. Greger also investigated by titration 5 drops antipyritin and determined a content of iron of 1 7 tenths grains, metal LS7 oxydule 2. 1 tenth oxide in the ferrum. The antipyritin also contains, besides acetic acid and acetone, 1, 2, 3, 4. Iron chloride, sulfuric acid, ammonium. It has a yellow brownish color, smells like acetic acid with a faintly sweet aftertaste, and a bitter, slightly sour and hot aftertaste. From the medical aspects, it is highly desirable that this strong medicine may be tested thoroughly for its chemical constitution by the able hand and the keen eye of the chemist. I made tests with mixtures of acetone and acid S. Four flasks were filled with drachma of acetone and respectively five drops sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, and acetic acid. The one with the sulfuric acid turned reddish brown and was brownish at after eight hours. The one with hydrochloric acid showed a faint trace of red after eight hours. On the second day, the one with the sulfuric acid was dark, brownish red. The one with the hydrochloric acid was slightly red. The other showed no change. On the sixth day, sulfuric acid dark brownish red, hydrochloric acid yellowish, nitric acid greenish yellow, acetic acid no change. On the eleventh day, sulfuric acid blackish red, hydrochloric acid brownish yellow, nitric acid greenish yellow tinge, acetic acid no change. On the fourteenth day, uh, sulfuric acid and hydrochloric acid like before without deposit, nitric acid faintly green yellow tinge with little white slimy deposit. Acetic acid, no change with little white, slimy deposit. After weeks, sulfuric acid, black red, no deposit. Hydrochloric acid, reddish brown like Madeira, wine, no deposit. Nitric acid, faintly greenish yellow with little white, slimy deposit. Acetic acid, no change, white with little, white, slimy deposit. The cork in the sulfuric acid had shrunk considerably and was black. The one in the hydrochloric acid was less shrunk and brown. The one in the nitric acid had shrunk less and had not. Changed color. The same applies for the acetic acid. Smell and taste. Sulfuric acid smells like acetone. Sour taste. Bitter aftertaste. Hydrochloric acid smells like acetone. Sour taste. Bitter aftertaste. Nitric acid less smell like acetone. Slightly. Etheris, no sour taste, but bitter. Acetic acid, slightly etheris, sour taste. Then burning. For these experiments, five drops of each mixture were added to one drachm of water. Sulfuric acid. The drops first form a layer on the top. When the liquid is transferred, it is turned brownish. After eight hours, the mixture had the color of water, slightly turbid, and on the walls above the mixture were oil-like deposits. Acetone smell, strong sour taste, then bitter and burning, lasting in the mouth, but no sensation in the throat. The bitter and burning aftertaste was still noticeable the next day. 
hydrochloric acid, mild smell of acetone, unnoticeably etherous. Our taste, later bitter, mildly burning, also slightly contracting the mouth and sometimes belch causing, later sour taste in the mouth. Feeling of warmth near the heart, finally long lasting bitter taste. Nitric acid, weak acetone smell, slightly etherous, mildly sour taste, then bitter and mildly burning, but only in the mouth, not the throat. Later, the feeling of warmth in the stomach. Acetic acid. The smell is hardly sour. The taste is at first weakly sour, then mildly bitter and burning, lasting for some time in the throat.